Welcome to this video presentation on discrete signal capture. In this presentation I'm going to take a more mathematical view of capturing discrete signals. Uh, in previous presentations I have focused on a, a more conceptual view of discrete signal capture and I've also provided a demonstration on how we can capture a discrete signal from a real-world signal using a data acquisition board. Um, now in this uh, example I'm going to use a very generic discrete or continuous signal. So it's a signal that changes over time. Uh, so it's the amplitude is changing over time. I'm not going to specify the quantity that we're interested in. It could be heat or voltage or light intensity or anything. Um, but it's just some signal that's changing over time. Now I am going to use a very basic signal. I'm going to use a straight line. Now the reason why I'm doing that is because we can represent a straight line nice and conveniently by saying x of t, which I'm just following a convention here to say that a continuous signal is x of t. Um, that's equal to m by t plus some offset c. So m is my slope whereas C is my offset. Okay. Now, I suppose most of you would be probably more comfortable with this expression mx plus C. Um, these equations of course are very very similar. The only difference is the change of variable. Um, at second level education you would normally refer to this as the x-axis so this horizontal axis is the x-axis in, in secondary level. Uh, we're going to call it a time axis, t. So you can see the x is substituted for t. And also my amplitude represents the amplitude of x of t. Um, so um, normally this would be labelled as y. So uh, hopefully you can relate the two expressions, so this expression with this expression. If you can't, um, you might need to take some time out and try to do so. Um, but let's just use some particular values. Um, we'd say that's 0 0.5 um, and what I want to happen to make things easy I want to fix that at 0 0.5 so after 0 0.5 seconds my amplitude is 1 that value there is 1 okay um, going back to my mathematical representation my slope of that line is going to be 1 so m will be equal to 1 and c for this line here will be 0 0.5 so that expression becomes t plus 0 0.5 so that's the mathematical expression for this particular continuous signal now it's important that you realize that any continuous signal no matter how complicated can be represented using some mathematical expression so even if we were to take an example of say this was the signal Okay, this signal here could be represented as a mathematical expression. Now that may take a little bit of a leap of faith for some of you, but it is the case and it's one of the key points that you need to accept in order to understand this presentation. Okay, now what we're trying to find when we're trying to find our discrete signal, what we're trying to find is the values of this continuous signal at different values points in time. So our discrete signal is equal to some sequence of numbers. So I'm going to draw them out horizontally this time. Um, and we're going to capture the discrete signal um, every 0 0.25 seconds. So our sampling rate is 4 hertz, so 4 times a second. And our sampling period is going to be 0 0.25. So I'm just going to label that. So capital T is equal to 0 0.25. So capital T represents my sampling period. Now, what I want to do then is find each of these sample points. I want to determine what the values of these samples are. So these green dots represent my discrete signal x of n. I want to determine them. Now I could of course just use the graph if my butt um, this graph isn't so accurate and I think I could do a better job if I analyze my mathematical expression. 
So I have my mathematical expression x of t and I can evaluate it at each of the points of time that I'm interested in. So I'm interested in this signal, continuous signal, the purple line or pink line, is uh, at different points in time. So at time t equal to 0, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75 and 1. So I can evaluate x of t for t equal to 0. So that's the first sample. So what's that equal to? Substituting for t equal to 0 gives me a value of 0 0.5. Evaluating x of t for t equal to 0 0.25 will give me a value of 0 0.75. Evaluating t or x of t for t equal to 0 0.5 will give me a value of 1. Okay, so just substituting t for 0 0.5, 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 is equal to 1. And evaluating x of t for t equal to 0 0.75, so that value there will be equal to um, 0 0.75 plus 0 0.5 is 1.25. And finally then, we'll do one more, x of t evaluated at t equal to 1 will give me a value of 1.5. Okay, so what have I done there? Basically, I have evaluated the continuous signal at different points in time. Now, what I've done is I've evaluated or sampled the mathematical expression for different points in time, rather than using the plot or the graph. Okay. Um, in fact, it's a more accurate way to determine the discrete signal. So if we have a mathematical expression for our continuous signal, um, and th the reality is that every every continuous signal can have a mathematical expression, now sometimes it's not that obvious, um, but if we have it, we can uh, basically evaluate that math mathematical expression for different points in time, and those points of time that we're interested in are the uh, separated by the sampling period, well then we can determine our discrete signal. So let's just fill in our values for our discrete signal. So our discrete signal, x of n, will be equal to 0 0.5, 0 0.75, uh, 1, 1.25, and uh, 1.5. So that's our discrete signal for these, if we're only interested in the first um, five samples of that signal. Okay? Okay, so that's a key point, that we're evaluating the mathematical expression this time, rather than um, evaluating the plotted signal. Um, now we can represent that process mathematically. So I'm going to describe the process that we followed here mathematically very concisely. And if you can understand this equation, you're making progress. So I am saying that mathematically we can represent the entire process as being the discrete signal x of n is equal to the continuous signal, and I'm using square brackets for the discrete signal and rounded brackets for continuous. So this discrete signal is equal to the continuous signal evaluated at n by t. And n is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Okay? So what I'm saying is that this mathematical expression describes this process that we've followed here. And maybe we'll take a, another look at solving this expression here. So I'm just going to do it in a slightly different way, uh, which hopefully will re make it easier to relate this expression to what I've done up here. So I'm just going to draw out a table, variable n. So in this I'm going to evaluate this expression for different values of n. So n is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? And x of x x of n by t. Well that's going to be 
So x, uh, x of n by t, n is equal to 0, that's going to be x of 0. For the second sample, when n is equal to 1, the variable t is my sampling period, 0 0.25, so that's going to be x, 0 0.25. When n is equal to 2 and t will, is a constant, it's 0 0.25, that's going to be x of 0 0.5. The next one, x of 0 0.75. And finally, x of 1. So what I am saying, this expression represents the sampling process. So it's, an exa it's a mathematical expression that describes the sampling process. These actual values, of course, we've evaluated them already up here, but we'll put them in again. 0 0.5, 0. Point, um, sorry, 0 0.75, 1, 1.25, and 1.5. So we can see that these match the numbers that we have here in our discrete signal. Okay, so the important thing about this presentation is well, the key point is this mathematical expression. If you can understand or make the link that this expression is a mathematical description of the sampling process, then you're, you're making progress. Okay? If you can relate the two, and I think you need to make sure that you understand that the rounded brackets represent the continuous signal and the square bracket represent the discrete signal. Now this is true for any um, signal, continuous signal. We've used a very simple example, or a very basic example here of a, a, a continuous signal that was represented by a straight line. But x of t could just have easily been described by a much more sophisticated or complicated expression, and you could follow the same process that to determine x of n. Okay, there's a fair bit in this presentation and hopefully you can make that link. If you can make the link, as I say, that this expression here, this expression here, describes the sampling process, then you understand, or you've got the main point of this entire presentation. Okay, thank you for your attention.